It was the middle of the night in August. A taxi came across a young school-aged girl, raising her hand to hail a taxi. She was dressed in out-of-season clothing, coat, a muffler and boots. Somewhat suspicious, he asked her, where are your father and mother? She said, I'm alone. Assuming that she was a lost child, he asked her the address of her house and drove straight there. As she exited the taxi with a Thank you, Oshi-san, the girl suddenly disappeared. The driver was sure that he really had a conversation with her and that he had actually touched her hand as she got out of the taxi. Clearly, the driver had thought that she was a real human being and so he was full of fear amazement and wonder at this experience. The taxi driver said, According to rumour, there are some other taxi drivers who have had similar experiences. The strangeness is nothing to me anymore. I truly think she was going to see her mother and father. This story is my own secret. The driver looked sad, and yet at the same time delighted as he recounted this story. In 2011, the northeast of Japan was struck by the worst earthquake and tsunami the country had ever seen, claiming the lives of approximately 16,000 people. Ever since this great tragedy, stories of ghosts have spread throughout the areas affected by this disaster, especially in the city of Ishinomaki, where over 3,500 people lost their lives. Yuka Kudo, a senior student of sociology, interviewed around a hundred regional taxi drivers in Ishunomaki about their unusual experiences picking up ghosts in their taxis. Hello, I'm Nemo, and welcome to episode six of season one of Certainly Strange. Uh, today's story I heard of uh, because people were talking about how in some parts of New Orleans, uh, taxi drivers refused to pick up anyone after midnight due to the amount of ghosts that they seemingly encounter. And uh, someone's response to that was that it, actually a lot of taxi drivers in Japan also encounter a lot of ghosts due to the 2011 tsunami. Um, but in contrary to New Orleans, they always uh, accept the ghost into the taxi and always drive to the location requested by the ghost out of respect. And, and the story just really uh, struck me. And, and I want to take a better look at it and researching it. Um, I found that it isn't just some folklore or urban legend. It's actually um, from an academic paper, uh, which I found very interesting. Uh, I, I'd never seen that before. Uh, one thing that I want to be very clear on uh, from the start is that I have absolutely no intention of making this story any bigger than as it was written down in the academic paper written by uh, Kudo. Uh, nothing nothing sensationalized. Uh, th that is why during my research I, I mostly stuck to academic papers. Academic papers by Kudo but also the ones who quote Kudo and um, instead of like newspaper articles because I did I did read some of the newspaper articles written about it and some well <laughs> it's you know, some news articles just treated this situation for the people in the story um, with absolutely no respect to the people, to the disaster, to the culture in which this takes place. Um, Japan treats their ghosts with uh, a huge amount of respect and that is what I will stick to as well. Now, uh, without any further ado, let's get into the story. It was an early summer, somewhere deep in the night, just about three months after the disaster. A woman wearing a winter coat climbed into a taxi near Ishinomaki station. She asked the driver to take her to Minamihama district, to which he responded, There is nothing left there. Why to Minamihama? And aren't you hot wearing that coat? Then the woman asked him, in a trembling voice. Am I dead? When he looked in the mirror at the rear seat, nobody was there. 
At first, the driver said that he was so scared that he could not move for a while. But I don't think it is something odd in particular. A lot of people died in the Great East Earthquake, right? It is natural that some people have regrets in this world. She would have been one of them. I don't have any feelings of fear anymore. If I saw someone wearing winter out-of-season clothes, waiting for a taxi again in the same way she was, I would pick her up and treat her in the same manner as regular passengers. According to Kuo, all of the taxi drivers insisted on anonymity when they were being interviewed. When she asked why, one of them admitted that he was so scared after what he had experienced that he really wanted to talk about it to someone but had decided to keep it to himself. And indeed, it is a story that is hard to believe. But the drivers really did believe that they were picking up genuine passengers because they each had started their meters. One driver even showed Kudo his driver's report, which noted an unpaid fare, for which the driver himself had to pay. Encountering a ghost seems scary, especially when you at first thought that it was a real, living person. But instead of being afraid, the drivers regarded their encounters with the ghosts as events to be cherished. After all, these ghosts were only trying to get home to their friends and families, travelling to a home that was no longer there. Sometimes ghosts are not scary. Sometimes they are just very, very sad. So that was the story of the ghosts of the Japanese taxi service. Um, well, this is a hard one for me to have an an opinion on because it it has to do with with a loss a, a grief that i i could never possibly imagine that that almost nobody could imagine so so whether these ghosts are the result of of some sort of ptsd or that these ghosts really are the spirits of victims that could just never find peace it is hard to say one thing that really struck me while researching this story is that, um, well, it is an academic paper. It, it isn't um, written to sell, like newspaper articles or blogs. Blog articles are written to attract a viewer. It is it is solely done for the purpose of research, and also that the people who were interviewed, the taxi drivers, they were anonymous. So they didn't tell their story f to gain fame. For me, that makes it so much more believable. So that's why I'm, I'm inching towards like this. It's almost like, like why, why would they lie about this? They have no motivation to lie. They have no gain you have nothing to gain from from lying about this. Uh, they they don't get like a, a, a movie deal or a book deal or more followers or any, on Instagram. They're just telling their story anonymously to a researcher who writes it down in her academic paper. I wish that more encounters with ghosts were researched like this, were treated like this, because there's always this question of like. Are they lying just to get attention? Or are they just like, yeah, trying to profit off of this? If all ghost encounters were treated like this, it would be so much easier to sniff out people who tell their story just to, to, just to gain something, who make a huge deal about something that probably was just a wind, just because they think like, oh, this will get uh, me attention, this will get me fame, this will get me money. Well, <laughs> again, I am not to judge about this. It is it is a very difficult situation because there was a huge disaster and a lot of people lost lost loved ones, and um, you know maybe there's a way that they're processing it by by seeing people who aren't there. But again, I'm not I'm not I'm not one to 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 judge on that. Um, it, it, but if you have any opinions about this story, or perhaps you have some 
ghost story that you would like to tell me um i would love to hear it and i would love to hear about you please just reach out to me via my website or uh via social media which are dr nemo's cabinet of curiosities and thank you for listening to this episode of certainly strange a podcast about the unexplainable Everything about the podcast and my other projects can be found on my website Dr. Nemo's Cabinet of Curiosities.com. There you can also find a transcript of this episode and the sources that I used in my research. And once again, thanks for listening. <laughs>